I'm Shikhar Ghosh. I'm a professor at Harvard Business School. Before becoming a professor, I've been an investor and I've been an entrepreneur. So I've been on both sides of the table going through the same journey that, that you're going to be on. The thing that a lot of people do when they're first starting up a company is they look for a template. They look for what should a good pitch have. You could look at the internet and there are a lot of very, very well put together checklists of all the things that are necessary in a pitch. And those things get you to a good pitch. The problem is that a good pitch won't get you funded. Why is that so? It's because that any credible investor is going to see probably a hundred pitches for one that they invest in. And so when you come in and you make a pitch to somebody, what you're asking the investor to do is to join you on a journey which, where they put their money in, but they also put their time in. And this journey is going to last four or five years. You're asking for a lot for that investor. You have to be one of a you know, hundred people that they choose to come into. That what you need is to take a pitch that covers all of the bases, that covers the, the checklist, and move it from being good to being great. So a template will give you a complete pitch. A story will give you a good pitch. But neither of these is going to get you to the point where an investor would be interested. Today's workshop is focused on how do you create the foundation for a pitch that an investor is going to be excited to be part of. So let me give you an example. Um, about six months ago, I had two entrepreneurs who came in and they were talking about creating jewelry that also had a safety function built in. So a woman could wear a bangle uh, and touch and tap on it and it would then send a message to people around her if she was feeling unsafe. The entrepreneurs who came in were passionate about the need for solving the problem of safety when women go out in the evening. They each had had experiences. They had people around them who'd had experiences. And what they were able to do was to make me want to solve the problem with them. I don't remember anything else of that presentation. I don't remember what the market size was. I don't remember what their economics was. I don't remember how they put the whole thing together. But when I left the room, I knew that this was something that I would want to be part of if I could find a way that all the other pieces fit together. My decision-making process in this case was not that different from the way a typical venture capitalist makes a decision. They are fundamentally making a, a decision to move ahead or not, not to invest or not, in the first less than a minute of when they come in. It's fundamentally an emotional decision, and it's fundamentally a decision on do I want to work with this team on this problem for the next four or five years? You know, a typical VC might even be more constrained than that. They look at several hundred pitches in a year, and out of several hundred, they pick one, maybe two pitches uh, that they're going to take to the next step. And in that process, the thing that drives them most is, do I care about this problem? Do I feel that my pulse, my heart rate, has gone up as a result of this problem, this team, this product, something in this process. So the first thing that you have to do is to frame your story and your excitement about the product you want to create or the service you want to create in a way that generates this emotion, that generates this desire for the investor to be part of your story. But the second thing you want to do is to understand that in most cases, the investor is not choosing to invest this on their own. He or she will listen to you, and then typically they'll get up and go to one of their colleagues, to their partnership, and say, I'm really excited about this. The colleague is going to say, what is this company? And they will have to repeat it. And so you need these two components. One is you need to get them excited about the proposition, and two, you need to frame it in a way that they can repeat that process or that statement in a way that their colleagues will also get excited. So one thing I've learned from trying to do pitches in this way is that this is something that you cannot work through intellectually. This is something that you have to keep trying because it's a combination of who you are and the way you feel and the message. And so what we're going to do is a short exercise where you take the company that you're working on and do a one-minute pitch with a partner where you're trying to get these two characteristics in. One is that you're trying to get 
the other person to feel the excitement you feel and the enthusiasm you feel. And the second is that you're trying to put it in a way that they can repeat it to somebody else.